Hey everyone, if you know recently in the last few days as of recording this video, it's been very hard to update your Hive OS installations, whether it be just the daily updates or do a Hive replace. Well, Yeti has found a way to basically run your own private repository of all that information, and you don't have to go through the slow servers of Hive OS. So, we're going to switch on over here to here, and here's a basically a hidden, it's not officially available yet on Hive OS on how to run Hive Packages Repository Mirror Setup. Basically, you're going to turn one of your workers into a, not really a GitHub repository, I guess it is, Yeti, is it considered a GitHub repository at that point or just a repository? Uh, it's a binary repository. Okay. It's the same with how operating systems Got it. Are Okay, but uh, very easy information, and even if I switch back over here to Discord real quick, Yeti was kind enough to give us a cheat sheet right here and some other information that we can use today. What we're going to do, we're going to test this and install this onto one of my CPU workers that has a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive on it. Um, we need probably about 30 gigs available, and this actually runs on one of your workers. So... Let me switch back over to here. We're going to go over to CPU1. Now, this is remote for me, so I'm going to jump into VPN here real quick. If you're doing this, you can do a Hive Shell, but in light of all the slowdown lately, the Hive Shell is very unstable. Your best bet is to get a direct local connection going through your regular local IP. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to click into here. one okay and we are now at the regular shell command line so yeti what's the first thing we're going to end up doing here so the first thing we need to do is that unfortunately the light http package is broken within hive at the moment okay so we have to install a alternative flavor to that uh being apache 2 uh, with some PHP 7 uh, references so that obviously it can start the process. Okay, and that's going to be our step one. We're just going to type this line right into the uh, shell. Okay, so let's try that. Control C. And we're going to... Comes back over here. Right-click, paste from browser. And then we're going to take that information, Control V. Okay, and hit Enter. And it's going to download it. Hit yes. It's downloading this directly from Ubuntu because if you didn't realize, Hive OS is based off of Ubuntu. It's a very customized flavor of it. Okay. Uh, if you see here, unable to fetch some archives. Maybe run an app get update or try with fix missing. I pushed an update to mine before I did anything. So maybe that's the difference. Let's try this again. There we go. That's what it was. You, so whatever computer you're doing that at the current time of making this video, you have to be running kernel 110, which would show up right here on your workers. See, now it's running 110. Before it was running uh, number 83. That link or that command would not work correctly with it so keep that in mind at the time of making this video which is saturday may 14th 2022 2022 okay first command is now done yeti fantastic so let's go switch back over here to your cheat sheet step two and uh, this is just to sync it right now Yep, so this uh, this is the repo mirror program, and all that this does is the dash S is for a forced synchronization. Okay, oh, so the, pro the repo fix, mirror is already built in. The, yeah, when they fix the, um, the interaction installing script to actually, so it actually works with like HTTP, this would all be automatic. Okay, so let's give this a shot now. Uh... Try doing the dash I a minute, it might set up the folders. Because originally I tried to install it and got that error. Resolve generation breaks? Correct. Okay, so we did the dash I. Now try doing the dash S. 
There we go. Okay, so dash I first and then dash S. Yep, because okay. obviously it needs to create the folders that it needs to download into. Okay, so now... Switches in it? Sorry. You can probably put both switches in there, although it kind of can't test it. I can't test it right now. Um, but at least for anyone who's trying this in the next week or two, just do a Wait. dash I, let that command finish, and then do a dash S, and it's working now. So what it's doing right now, Yeti, correct me if I'm wrong, it's actually downloading all of the daily updates that you would normally see here in orange and saving it locally, correct? Yeah, so you get the periodic updates along with every single mining program and version that is currently available within Hive. Oh, that yes, so that's, that's right. The beta versions, the stable versions, and all the archived versions. All the available versions of T-Rex, Team Red Miner, Phoenix Miner, whatever, that's downloading yes. all of them right now. So this is going to take a little bit of time because we're trying to mitigate this problem because they're being slow. But once you have this all downloaded, keeping it updated is very easy. So we finished downloading. It will probably take you at least a half a day currently to download everything from HiveOS's repositories. So uh, our friend Yeti, which is also on this video, he has a private repository. So I basically just copied everything from his to get this video done today, basically. Uh, just to verify everything's there, this is Midnight Commander on my CPU one. So we're going to go up through the folders here and when it's done downloading, it actually throws it over here down to triple W HTML repo mirror. Correct. Correct. Okay. Then repo. We'll get to these three files in a second. Binary. Here is everything it downloads. This is the repository. You can see all the miners, all the versions. This is all locally saved on this uh, mining rig now. I mean, this goes on forever. So let's go back. Now you also do have an option. These three files right here, the Hive OS, these are your Hive replace commands. If we go back to Yeti's little um, cheat sheet here, step 2A, if you wish to get the full builds for the Hive replace commands, then you also need to um, do a, the same command with a dash G and then select exactly which version number you want. Okay, let's paste from browser. So you can see that it's actually already got three of the... Those are the three that I copied off of your private yeah. repository. And then this is what's also from here. So what... This is the part of information you would have to put in there to download, correct? No, you just literally, it's like Hive Replace. So if you wanted the first one, you'd press 1 and press Enter. Oh, and, and this will tell it to download it. Okay, got it. Now, so, obviously, if you change it to have its own custom repo list, like you were downloading it from me, you would <laughs> obviously only see the ones that are available on the repository that you're downloading from. Okay, but for everyone who's watching this video right now, they type in this command, you won't have this part populated yet because there wouldn't be anything there. You would just collect, uh, select 1 through 13, and it would manually just pull down that file for you, correct? Yeah, and okay. position it where it needs to go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's get out of that. So now let's go to our next step, which is step 3. Okay, we got to do a nano... ETC cron tab. Okay, so what is this setting up? So this is what would be the auto synchronization part of Hive's uh, script. Got it. it. Okay. It unfortunately, is broken right now, so we're manually going to do what their program does. And this is going to allow the script to automatically check for updates to the repository. How often? When Once we're done. Once an hour. Once an hour. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this over there first. Get started. And for everyone who's looking, nano is basically a command line version of a text editor. That's what we're in right now. So we're going to go, what, hit and enter right before this pound here and add. At the very end, so you want to go one, 
character to the right and then press enter so below that because that's the internal commands now we're going to put it underneath okay cool so uh, paste from browser paste okay and that's it right yep so the the zero and the four dots means that it's to run every hour uh, uh, on the o'clock basically okay every every day of every month of every year basically perfect uh what user is it to run which is roots and, and then okay the command to run it with a uh piping it to the dev null so that it doesn't output a ton of garbled uh muck on your screen while you're still in the shell just completely runs in the back background without any right. intervention perfect okay so now to save this the uh, easiest way is actually just do a control X. It's going to ask you save modified buffer. Just hit Y. File name to hit en uh, to save. Just hit enter. There, the file saved and now updated with these new changes. By the way, all these changes will be down. This little cheat sheet will be down in the video description for everyone. So, what you need to do is go back to your farm level, all the way back here. And we're going to go to your settings here section out right there all the way down here to the bottom you have advanced settings click on that keep on going packages repository server mirror url you're going to click a url the only question is what are we going to do for a local http colon forward forward slash and then the local ip address of that rig of that rig okay so of that specific rig so okay. for this rig it's going to be 10, 110, 113. Correct. And it's on port 80 anyway by standard, so you don't need to put any... Yeah, don't need any port then. Um, for everyone watching, though, if you're going to do this repository, the best option is whatever worker you're going to put this on, make sure in your router that you set this as a static IP so it doesn't move around uh, if the rig gets restarted or goes offline for a few hours. So keep that in mind as well. So HTTP for me and that's all we need correct uh, forward slash repo oh. forward slash binary correct one second I believe it needs a uh, trailing slash trailing slash yes it does okay there we go it is now saved in here uh, what's going to happen, it's going to push this information to all your workers on your farm within about 60 seconds. So give it about 60 seconds for everything to go through. I should be able to go back to my farm. And you'll see this hello command here. And that's exactly what it's doing. It's updating the uh, repository information for all your workers. And it says sending hello. Okay, writing repository URLs. So that means these workers are ready. Now to prove it, that this is actually going to go to my local repository for this. What we're going to do, we're going to shell into CPU4 because this has the ability for a periodic update. So let's go into here. And we're going to run a command self upgrade dash dash force. Now, once I hit this, you're going to see where it's pulling the information from. We should see it instead of pulling from, like, download.hiveos.com or something like that. It should be pulling directly from my IP address that we saved. See? Right here. It is pulling it from the local repository instead of HiveOS. And this is what normally happens in the background. If you're in your regular web GUI and you just click this button, you're actually seeing it for the first time. This is what it's actually doing. And there we go. Restarting autofan, and we, it's going to restart XM rig for this rig. We're good to go. Let's close this out, and that proves that we are now accessing the local repository. Now, if for some reason this rig does go down, it should fall back onto the regular HiveOS repositories. That works great for periodic updates, but what if you want to do a full Hive replace, and you don't want to go slow through HiveOS's uh, repositories? These three files that we showed earlier that are the full Hive replaces, now we're going to show you, you got to do a little different to do a Hive replace from local currently. So what we're going to do, 
We're going to go back to CPU 4, the one we just did the periodic update to, and we're going to load up the latest uh, kernel and high replace because we're only running on uh, number 83 right now. We're up to 110, so we're going to update to that. So let's get back in here again. So what we're going to do is a hive replace. We're going to do a double dash repo equals and Don't it's going to put the HTTP at the beginning. Oh, you're right. Yes. And then and forward slash repo. Uh, repo and trailing slash correct yep now we don't need the binary part because as you saw in the folder that we were at everything else was stored in here but it's one folder up so that's why we don't need the binary part so if I click here it's loading images list from my local repository so what we're gonna do is just number one which is our latest that we have Type in yes. Watch how fit. Watch how fast this goes. Look at that. <laughs> that cool. that is full gigabit from one uh, one rig at the local network to another one. It doesn't get any better than that unless you run ten gig. <laughs> What'd you say, Yeti? There's definitely no bottleneck on that. Oh, none whatsoever. Now, the rest of this is just going to be the regular speed of whatever the rig is set at. Uh, it's got to unpack that image file. It's going to check for integrity, and then it's actually going to rewrite the SSD or flash drive or whatever you have it saved with the new version. Reboot, and we'll be set to go. So we'll be back in a minute. There we go. Yep, Hive OS number 110, and, if we, and we just saw it pop up here. There we go. We are updated, and that was a lot faster than if we went through the regular Hive OS repository. So that basically handles how you run your own local repository for Hive OS at the current time. They're still developing this, and it will probably be easier in the future. Uh, one other note that Yeti definitely brought up on whatever worker you're actually running the local repo, like for me it's CPU1, if you go to the settings tab all the way at the bottom, if you're going to do this in a public facing, like you're going to share this repo out to friends or whatever, make sure you turn off shell in a box. And it jumped up for that reason. Um, you definitely do not want to have that active on that unit. And also, anyone that is randomly posting, hey, I got a free public repo for Hive OS available that you do not personally know and can vouch for, uh, be very suspicious of that because at that point now it could be an attack vector. They could modify these files and inject a virus or whatever in there. It's a security threat at that point. So it's best to just run your own private repository for yourself or your business. Or if you're going to use someone else's, make sure it's a trusted friend. So just keep that in mind. Any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Um, or you can also come down to the Misfit Mining Discord. The link for that will also be down in the video description below. I have my own room in there. You can ask more questions in here. Uh, myself and Yeti will keep an eye on that room, at least for a little while, and see what's going on, how many questions, and how much more clarification we need on this process. So, Yeti, you have any final parting thoughts here? Uh, other than the, this took a little bit of uh, trial and error... Um, due to the fact that I believe that Hive has obviously had a lot going on that they're, they're, they're prioritizing right now. So oh, yeah. I guess that, you know, a private repository isn't exactly top of their list right now. So obviously just be prepared for a long wait while the first synchronization takes place. Yes, the first one might take you up to a day. Once everyone starts trying to do this, especially with the larger farms, the Hive OS is servers are probably going to get hit even worse for a little while but in the long term this should help hive os alleviate some of the bandwidth issues they're having with their own repository so once again thanks for watching everyone we'll catch you in the next video
Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we got teens. <laughs> so much for that. 